not what an American prostitute usually gets. Uh, you are aware, of course, the uh, situation with uh, 7-Eleven? No. Well, 7-Eleven was bringing in uh, illegals. To work? The Pakistanis and etc. Yeah, to work. To work. Yeah. And, and work extremely, I bet, less than minimum wage. Oh, of course. Extremely cheap. What greedy. You see how greedy capitalism can be? Vile, vile, vile system. And you know what? They demonize Karl Marx. But in reality, every, everybody after Karl Marx corrupted the, the teachings of Karl Marx, which was extremely fair to everybody. She was detained in the Passaic police lockup pending a first appearance in court. Police lockup, yeah, yeah. Probably only got a turkey sandwich and coffee. Turkey sandwich? And coffee. Smoked butterball turkey? That's how it used to be in the old days. Or kosher turkey sandwich? Probably nothing on it. White bread. You gotta be kidding me. Really? The sheriff said the arresting officer took the name of the business owner for further investigation. Oh, look at me. I'm a I'm a I'm a cop and I'm I'm preoccupied with morality. We got we gotta enforce morality in in New Jersey. Oh yeah, well, I'm, I don't I don't go after the real crooks like uh the big banks and Goldman, Goldman Sachs people. Oh, no. What like, was that thing you put on Facebook there about uh, that? Uh, I put a lot the of Marijuana things. arrests so many in such a hour or so or whatever, and then and, 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 and the arrests on Wall Street, zero. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, of people in prison for marijuana offenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many on Wall Street were imprisoned? Zero. zero. <laughs> it is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And we'll be back. Yeah, we'll be back. Chocolate. Get away, you little bastard. You're bothering me. Okay, we're back. While Dr. Bill is absorbing his much-needed nutrients to refuel his body for the rest of the show and also his research and work later on tonight I will uh, start something uh, something you know the show I don't mean to start trouble but well you never know you know when you tell the truth you're very automatically you're very controversial now we were uh, discussing or beginning to discuss uh, uh, morality, so-called morality crimes, sex crimes. You know, if you want to call it a crime, like uh, taking prostitution, for example, and massage parlors, and entrapment, and how how state police, not state police, I'm sorry, county police, like the Passaic County Police, uh, you know, rushed into a massage parlor and arrested the. Uh, the, people, the staff there and closed the place down all because of the uh, soliciting of uh, human touch you know like Dr. Bill was saying of a woman of a woman and a trying man trying to become a private contractor yeah and determine what she will do with her own body with her own body exactly correct right. We don't have to get into detail, sexual detail, but the but the law makes a big stink about it. It's really a victimless crime, and uh, but the Republicans seem to think it's it's a big crime. So instead of going after the real crooks like the big banks and and Wall Street people, Goldman Sachs, whatever, uh, or or crooked congressmen and senators, oh, they don't want to go after that. They want to go after the poor, you know, innocent. I Even. call them poor innocent because they came from a, a oppressive country where the, where the women do not have equal rights, and uh, the, the, many of them are came from very poor backgrounds, and uh, they're not really hurting anybody. But you know, of course, the the right wing, fascist, uh, puritanical. Cult, religious cultists have to make a big deal about these morality c crimes. But meanwhile, financial morality crimes are overlooked, like the big banks. 
that's okay. That's all part of business. So where we were talking, myself and Dr. Bill, about police entrapment. Now, if a cop is uh, undercover or e or in uniform, right, and they are they are questioning someone. Okay, in this case, the the P Passaic County police officer was was out of uniform, correct? Undercover? Obviously, he was undercover. Yeah. Well, if he was in uniform, then the girl... It wouldn't be undercover now, would it? ...would not be soliciting him, mm -hmm. saying such things. No, no, no give hand job, no, no. We no do that here. No do that here. No blow job, no hand job, no fucky fucky, no, no me, me rub you wrong time, none of that stuff. No, that wouldn't have went on. Uh, so he must have been undercover. So, um, in in uh, civilian clothes. So, let's say he's uh, uh, secretly uh, taping the conversation, and he tries to bait her, the masseuse, by asking some questions, trying to get her to admit things. Okay, it gets recorded. The undercover cop. Uh, calls in the boys and they close down the place and they arrest the personnel okay based on what she said that's on tape now it's on tape okay the owner of the massage parlor can get a lawyer and can prove entrapment correct I don't think so now I believe recorded as, the, as the, the writing went there. She's the one Cor who mentioned it. She volunteered the different varieties of stuff. A solicitation, okay. Yeah. Right. But I think if he asked, right, that would be entrapment. But but in the business, these women that are in the adult services or adult entertainment business, entertainment business, yeah. whether it be therapeutic. In more ways than one, uh, they often will ask the uh, patron, "Are you a cop?" And by law, you have to. Well, if you and say, why? if you say, "No, I'm not a cop," and you lie to the person asking you, maybe that would be entrapment. Yes. Now, if the if the person says off the bat, "Are you a cop?" and the person says, "Well, uh, yes, I happen to be one." Okay, then there won't be any entrapment because then the uh, the Asian woman would just give a therapeutic, uh, 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 medically oriented, uh, you know, massage mm -hmm. for physical therapy. You know, not including genitalia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so isn't there a law that states you have to tell somebody they they are being recorded? There is. There is. You know, must have a beep. Yeah. Oh, that's probably maybe, Billy. Maybe that's him. But I, I, I might have to use the um, the stove. Reach to Oh shit! No, it wasn't him. It mm -hmm. wasn't him because. Yeah, but wait a minute. Why? Why did that kick on? Two rings. In two rings. That's what it does. Get it now. Hello. Hello, James. Yes, w William H. Morrow the Third. Uh, are you and Reverend Will Howard? Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I'm. I am talking to you from the uh, the stovepipe to God to make sure that you hear what we're saying. All right. How are you able to make out what I'm saying right now? Yeah, not too clear. It's pretty faint, but I can hear pretty well. Okay, I'll just I'll just periodically use the stovepipe. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, the peop the people that the viewers know what stovepipe is. It's kind of like uh, it represents the uh, religious uh, zealot uh, right wing cultists that like to interfere in everyone's life because they claim they they talk to God and and they. And they know what God is thinking and what He wants, and they they could pass judgment on others. And so I, I made a a stovepipe. I took a bunch of cans and I, I gorilla taped them together. And uh, this is what I'm talking from right now. Which is why you sound like you're in a 
can, right? Yeah, he's in a can. I'm in a can. I, I, I technically am in a can. <laughs> now, um, there you go. how is everyone? Not bad, you know. It's it's humid out there, man. It's not that much cooler, you know. But we're okay. Um, well, we, the whole country seems to be boiling right now, so we're all suffering together. So yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, no uh, one gets hurt by it, but, uh, but unfortunately, people do. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, uh, I know there's a big drought going on still in the Midwest. Well, you look at Death Valley; they could break their own record. They're going to be 129 today. Wow. And wow. their all-time record as of a hundred years ago was 134. So they're pushing. Wow. They're getting close. Well, uh, let me just tell the folks uh, who the person you he you are hearing right now is our official newsletter censored Mega Life 21 commercial voiceover artist William H. Morrow the third. And what lo Where are you now, sir? Are you still in Austin, Texas? I still am down there. I spent the entire week. I am still down there. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. And we hear you loud and clear. Now, uh, we were discussing the fact that Americans really have to lighten up and stop being thin-skinned in relation to what, what Paula Dean is going through. Well, it's true. But really, it's, she really said nothing. And I'm not, please don't get me wrong, anybody in the black persuasion or any race. I mean, as I said last week, I played so many different ethnic groups on my teams. It's the N word. You can't say the C word. You know what that is. What's next? The P word for Polak. The W word for WAP. I mean, come on. Ooh. We're so thin skinned, we're afraid to speak anymore. And, and, what, and what I noticed about Paula Dean, her supporters, the <laughs> vast majority are black. These black ministers and everyone are coming out to her support saying, hey, people, come on now. They're treating her worse than a serial killer, it seems like. Yes. I mean, okay, she said something, maybe it's bad. Well, maybe it's not that bad. It's not that big a deal. She said the end word. Okay, she said it. Forget it. Go on. Let's go, people. Yeah. Well, I don't understand this. I don't understand the harping on it. it was there. People are just... I'm just proud of her, her supporters. I really am. I don't like yeah. her groups that... Like the Food Network that just jump ship immediately and said goodbye, you're through. They said, yeah, these companies... These companies have no backbone. If I was the CEO of these companies, could we stand behind her or whatever, 100%? Maybe, probably, what she said may have been wrong. So be it. Accept her apology. Yeah, I'm but, sorry. But people, people from all cultures always say things in anger and, uh, and or out of so, frustration. So what? So what? Move on, yeah, man. That thin skin, my God, the names I've been called in all my years of football and even non-football, so what? It just never bothered me. Why are we so thin-skinned as a society? It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, everything don't think offends everybody. As we discussed last week, what do you mean by offended? What does it feel like to be offended? I, mean, I, got, I have to be honest with both of you guys. Nothing offends me. I don't know what offended feels like. I have no idea. Oh, I'm offended. You can call me every name of the book. I'll just say Nothing about their words. Yeah. Well, you have a very strong self-esteem. People need to be strong. Don't let these words bother you. Yeah. Well, a person shouldn't lose their their business and their entire career over 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 several words. It's ridiculous. I mean, exactly. They made her feel so guilty. She's crying and crying and apologizing profusely. I mean, this is so wrong. She so should wrong. she should be angry and say. Further and deeper psychologists and this and that. This is something that doesn't even deserve attention. Hey, everybody. Plus, this many weeks of news and psychologists analyzing, yeah. overanalyzing, dissecting, and telling. Well, she used to be this. And she, come on, let's stop it. Okay, enough is enough. I mean, everybody says things out of anger and frustration. All races and nationalities say derogatory things about each other and well, uh... Well, by the same token, let's be honest, the blacks use the word, I'm going to say a word, I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm not going to offend anybody. They use the word nigger in all the, a lot, now. but I mean a lot of the rap music. Yes. They call each other that at times. Come on, people. Yeah. Well, didn't George Jefferson use the word honky and whitey a, a million times? No, on... honky, 
why I used to laugh with my teammates and I used to ask the black teammates, what is it you guys call us? Uh, with peckers? They said, no, peckerwood. I said, that's it. I said, that's a nice little laugh. I thought it was cute. I don't right. know if I didn't buy it. Right. You know, I mean, really, why is it? I mean, I, I don't understand it. I am totally baffled by this. This one really baffles me why they're harping on yeah. this. And, and Matt one Lauer. Little, little incident that doesn't even deserve a news blip. And, and, you know, and, and to ruin some, try to ruin somebody's life. Yeah. I and, don't understand this. And Matt Lauer went after her like he was trying to sabotage her career. I, I mean, well, I think. Well, maybe to make it look that she could really come forward and give him the straight answers, too, though. Maybe make her look good and a good thing, too. He asked the hard questions. What are hard answers? So I, th I think she did very well. Some say yeah. she did, some say she didn't. I don't know. These people are so. No matter what you say, it will never be right to some people. That's true. Uh, I had somebody uh, criticizing our where, where we do our show on on YouTube. He he, he compliments our philosophy and way of thinking, but instead of talking about the content of our show. He criticized the aesthetics. I mean, you know, oh, you're like your, back, your background the whole bit. Like the he says that uh, how come we're not? Uh, uh, two people actually said this uh, over the course of time. How come we're not in a ultra modern, state of the art, uh, uh, you know, TV studio? And I told them simply, they cost big bucks, which means you have to find sponsors. If you find sponsors, they tell you what you can say, what you cannot say. So now we have censorship. Well, it's also kind of nice that these couple of people, they're entitled to their opinion. Yes. And it's wonderful to have their opinion. Right. Now, they don't always have to agree with you, with Reverend Bill or me mm -hmm. or Joe Blow down the street. Right. It's great to have input from people. There's never anything wrong with input. This is a country of free right. speech. But it seems like we're getting to be less and less of that. Right. Right. You, know, you can't open your mouth or say boo anymore. Yeah. And somebody's offended, as we said earlier. Uh, now, the, the word, the magical word, the magical key word for the day is sycophant. And a sycophant, well, you know, it is an ass kisser. And, uh, well, you can't kiss everybody's behind. No. I mean, we're just going to get to. And granted, one guy who was, I guess, a bad person in some ways and a jerk, and it was sad to see him getting beaten, that was wrong, horrendously yeah. wrong, it was Rodney King. Uh, about two decades ago. Oh, that was police he brutality, but I doubt. He said one of the greatest things ever. Can't we all just get along? Can't we all just get along? The late Rodney King. He, yes. He, he passed, passed away, away. Not too long ago. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah, and, and I want to say... About it, so people, make, people mock this gentleman's show, Jeremy Springer. Yeah. Yes, it's a slog, slog at times. Yes, blah, blah, blah. But I will never forget what he said. It says the closing of every show. Take care of yourselves and each other. Yes. Think well, about that. I, exactly. Now, I want to say, I want to have a moment of, a brief moment of silence for the passing away recently of somebody that I, I personally had conversations with and my friend can create, uh, the um, uh, WWE um, uh, Hall of Famer, Doink the Clown, Matt Bourne, died. What was this year? It happened recently. Doink the Clown died recently. I do not have the all the details on his death, but he, he was a very nice man to the, to me and Ken. His wife was very very nice to us. He's a wonderful guy, and of course he he was a he he, he was in main events uh, um, in the WWE. He was a star. Uh, uh, Matt Bourne, it was his wrestling name uh, in other territories before he came to the WWE, and I want to salute him. May he rest in peace. Matt Bourne, Doink the Clown. I, I was very shocked to hear it, and a um, moment of silence. Okay, for Doink the Clown. Now, Bill, I want, uh, Billy Morrow, I want you to hear what I'm going to say that I found out recently. There is a man who um, I was very impressed by because he he's a politician, he's a Democrat, uh, African American. He's a politician that has a lot of charisma when he speaks. 
very similar to a Barack Obama or a Bill Clinton. He uh, he's very captivating. He he he's, he appears to be very energetic, enthusiastic, and intelligent. And he's the mayor of Newark, Cory Booker. Oh, who, Cory Booker. Okay, now Cory Booker is running for New Jersey State Senate to to. He's not. No, what he's is he running for? Governor. for? Federal. Oh, I'm sorry. I made. He's I, I, for Governor against Christie. I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry. Big difference. He's running for New Jersey. He's running representing New Jersey. He's for the governor of New Jersey against Chris Christie. No, right. no, that's that's uh, Barbara Bono is running against Chris Christie. Cory Booker well, is running. Say Booker just might want to do now. Well, later, later, maybe later. But Booker's running for national senator in Washington representing the state of New Jersey. But yeah. I spoke to, I know a person who I became friends with who worked with Cory Booker and said that Cory Booker is putting on an act and he sold out his own people, his own uh, voters, his own race, and he is a liar. And, and she knows him personally and he... You know, it almost makes him sound like a politician. Yeah, sounds like a politician. Well, he's got he's got a commercial now where he says he oh he did wonders for the public school system. Is he, is he selling out his own people? Isn't he? Uh, you look at these commercials on TV. They're when they attack each other. Their opponent all has bad points. What's true? What's true anywhere? I mean, well, you really start to wonder. Well, what happened? What happened was he had a meeting with Chris Christie and. Uh, Ever since then, he started closing public schools left and right, even though he says he's done wonders for public schools. And he, all of a sudden, as a Democrat, he's agreeing with Republicans that he is for privatizing education, which well, means... Sometimes, sometimes you might have to, when there are the attendance. Yeah, but then who... Down the dropout rate is going sky high. You can't afford to keep something. Yeah, but then, then, open. then who is going to afford to have a good education? Only rich kids, then. No, every, every single child deserves a great education. No, every child deserves it. Well, they ain't getting it. They're every not. child should have. Let, let, let's not be caught like some of these, these Middle East countries where they frown or will kill you if you're a woman or a girl trying to get an education. I an mean, education is crucial to human being, species. I mean, I mean everyone deserves this. Oh, that, exactly, but academia in America, and I'm not mentioning mentioning any names... I'm not singling out any one school, but American academia is an absolute is running an absolute ripoff racket when it comes to tuition. I mean, I, I spoke. I forget what it was on the news today. I forget where it was. Student uh, loan interest rates. Uh, the interest rates on some tuition will double from three point four to six point eight percent. Well, the big banks have to make more money. <laughs> Why? Because they're money? greedy. Why are you so greedy? Well, because I mean, that's what... Make more? Why do you have to make more by hurting... Greed others? is good. No, greed is not good. That was in a movie. That's, that's correct. It's right. Uh, that is what Wall Street, Street obeys. You know, people... These companies each try to outdo their themselves annually. You don't have to outdo yourself every year. You don't have to have continuous growth. Lower your profit Every quarter. Market. Slow down a little bit. Okay, instead of making, say it's IBM, instead of making $25 million this quarter, we'll do $21 million. Okay, we'll make it up, blah, 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 but we're still making. We're not losing. Yeah, how much Lower money is a profit margin? I mentioned that to James the other day. I said, you mean to tell me, according to these people, that corporations were not making profits in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, and half of the 70s? They were making Well, millions. of course they were. In billions, IBM averages around 25 to 27 billion per quarter, not per year. That's yeah. my father's yeah. Cor uh, uh, company. Yeah, how much is enough, my God? How, uh, I mean, how much money, how much profit is enough for these people? You know, it's a. Uh, well, remember we discussed weeks ago about uh, they're trying to satisfy the stockholders. Remember I mentioned the former chairman of GE when he says, I'm not here to satisfy you in stock world. You don't like what I do? Sell your stock or we'll buy it back from you. Really? I've got a business to run. 
Mr. Welch. Really? And that's the way it is. They're trying too hard to satisfy the stockholder by giving annual dividends or more every year annually. Uh, you know, really. Well, she, remember, Jack Welch was the one who began the uh, offshoring of jobs with GE. Well, no, no. Offshoring of jobs is talked about long before. No, but it was Jack Welch who really made it, you know, put it into the uh, popular cycle. Well, the mainstream where he made it maybe bigger, but that's been done since that's the correct. 50s, possibly even yeah. earlier. Well, they don't, they, they don't pay... Offshore banking. Plus, G yeah, G know. GE doesn't pay federal income taxes either. It's a proven fact. They get subsidies? Right. Yeah. They get subsidies. Uh, of getting along. Uh, uh, I mean, around it. And refunds. Tax, uh, it's just so... I don't know how, what the word is. Odd. It's corrupt. It this. That's the word. Corruption. Now, now, I mean, there are students, and this is despicable. There are American students that owe ninety and 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 well, and higher. You're not right, Jimmy. They're going to they'll be in debt the majority, probably most of their lives. Yes, if ninety thousand. Right. Uh, ninety thousand. Could you picture this, uh, listeners and viewers? Somebody owing ninety thousand dollars or more. In student loans to the college that, that they went to. This way. You 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 paid a lot of money to, to get an education to be in debt. Does that make sense? Right, and and the interest and rates. And not be able to get a job. Yes, wherein right. you got right. your right. education, you so you'll never pay back the loan. Your way out of debt, get a good job when you graduate. The American dream. The American dream isn't what it used to be, gentlemen. No. You know, the streets yeah. are not paved with gold. No. How are these students going to pay off their student loans if they can't find an entry-level job out of college? Well, you can't. Uh, uh, we have, with electronics, you have downsizing. You have fewer and fewer jobs available because your robots are doing the work. Lasers, the whole bit. Uh, Outsourcing. that don't get tired, that don't neg renegotiate a contract, that the labor unions can't get into their union, so to speak. You know, it's it's, uh, it's taking jobs away. I mean, technology is wonderful on the one hand, it's precision. It's, it's not just that. Uh, but it's taking away jobs. It's not just technology, it Bill. To take away jobs. It's, it's uh, outsourcing and, and importing H-1B worker visa immigrants that work cheap and outsourcing and technology. I think it's all three, to be honest with you. Uh, well, well, again, that's a show for the future, but then again, you look Sweatshops now. Sweatshops, right? Treated or mistreated is the actual word. It's just awful what's going on all over the world. Yeah. You know, there's child labor camps in, in the world right now be, are being run by major corporations. You've got child labor basically going on in this country in certain spots from what I've understood. Right. You know, so you have to watch out. I mean, it's unheard of. I mean, in Europe and, and Canada, any any child, no matter how poor, can get a uh, a college education. Is that right, Bill? Well, yeah. Well, some parts, some parts, but they have child labor problems as well too. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, getting an education without having a damn uh, hundred thousand dollar tuition bill to pay so off. Everyone I mean. should be entitled to a good education. That's the insane. To better yourself. The cost of tuition is insane. It's absolutely insane. But uh, well, then again, by the same token, on a smaller scale, you look at any college, USA or worldwide. Look at the prices of the, the books you're required to buy. Oh, oh yeah. Now you're going to tell me that textbook costs one hundred twenty dollars. It Come may on. maybe several hundred dollars too. They don't. They are. It costs probably a few dollars if that to print. And they're just ripping. The student has, my God, I've got a, I, I'm, you know, these are requirements. I, I told you that a hospital. You must, for this course, buy this book. You have to have this book. You have right. to have, what are you going to do? Hey, man. I, I told no, you hospitals, really, so hospitals, I told you hospitals uh, charge insurance companies $1 per aspirin. <laughs> yeah. yeah $1 oh, per aspirin. Man. Why? Five dollars for Tylenol. Wait a minute, let's put stop. Five dollars for a Tylenol? Holy you shit. Over an aspirin basically probably costs pennies. I can go to a dollar store and get a bottle of 250 or 500 aspirin for a buck. Look, Jim, there was a company on TV during a documentary a few years ago. They made vitamin C. 
Yeah. They're the only company. Half on the road. Half on the road. The, the guy showed everybody. He denied a thing. He was openly honest. He said, here's all our vitamin C. They said that all these little paper things. They said, what are, what are those? He goes, different companies store labels. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, the vitamin C is all the same. That's uh, sure. Different different bottles, sure, different ascorbic products, acid. Like a Walgreens, a Costco, or what have you, or this one, or Rite Aid, or what have you. It's all the same. It's the same thing, he said. Be complex. It's, it's vitamin, the same. Vitamin C. There's only one for everybody. So, Absolutely. Uh, uh, there's another example. A label means that, oh, I like this one better than that one. It's the same thing, people. It's the same you know? thing. And and Bill, uh, Bill uh, uh, Reverend Bill says they're charging... The insurance companies five dollars for one Tylenol, a, you know, a set of Metaphine. Well, okay, let me let's be honest, Reverend Bill, too. Who's to blame then? Blame the insurance companies. Why are they tolerating it? That's true. Why don't they come in and say, "Hey, wait a minute, fellas, cut the crap right now, okay? It doesn't cost this much." Is there a fault for not fighting and saying, "Hey, this is the end"? They do that when it. Okay. They do that when it involves cancer therapy. Let's put a stop to this. You know it doesn't... They put we a stop to it. We want to see a record. 